Hmm. I need a new video idea. I spent so much time talking about Final Fantasy and stuff. It would be nice to try something different. Well, what about Kingdom Hearts 3? There's even Moogles in that one, Kubo. I don't think you really get it, bud. I want to stay away from RPGs for this one and talk about something with fun gameplay, good music, and a vibrant art style. Oh, something with like a bear and his little flying friend. Like me and you. Oh, I don't really have any suggestions for that one, Kubo. <sighs> yeah. Man, I keep forgetting to tidy up that trash pipe area. <gasps> I got it! Banjo Kazooie is a game that one of my friends from Maybelline introduced me to about four years ago. I was shocked it was something I never really even considered giving a try on my own for some reason, despite its many ways of availability to me. When he came over, I dusted off the old N64, popped that bad boy in, and booted the system up. Then I took the cartridge out, performed the usual CPR, and voila. Just like the Big Bang, there was life. I'm not too sure how to put it into words, but the game just felt familiar. It was as if it was a game that I greatly enjoyed in my younger years. One that I could see myself putting a lot of time into after school and on weekends, playing back and forth as I once did Ocarina of Time in Mario 64. I'm usually not big on collectathons, not like there's much of them left nowadays, but I never really get tired of exploring around the game in search of notes, jiggies, jingles, and more. The levels are creative and wacky, and there's plenty of good tunes sprinkled throughout the world. Spyro Mountain is like permanently engraved in my mind and plays in my head from time to time, and quite frankly, I don't mind that. The gameplay is also really fun, and there's a lot of neat abilities that Banjo can utilize throughout the game with the help of Kazooie, who can help you shoot egg projectiles, traverse levels faster, and also soar around with grace, or as Buzz Lightyear and Woody would call it, falling with style. Also, with the help of a character named Mumble, there's a good handful of transformations that you get to use to spice up a level even further. Banjo-Kazooie will go on to get 4 additional games, with 2 of those I didn't even know were on Game Boy Advance. At one point prior to Microsoft's acquisition of Rareware, Banjo-Kazooie was teased to get a proper third game, but that game would never see the light of day, and in its place we would instead receive Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. The game was, let's just say, different from what people came to expect from a game following up to the likes of Banjo and Banjo-Tooie. However, love it, hate it, it would be the last Banjo-Kazooie game we would get in over 10 years. But hey. E3 is just next week, and I'm positive that Phil Spencer is well aware that fans would like to see the revival of more classic rare franchises such as Banjo-Kazooie, Conquer, Perfect Dark, and more. Something Banjo-related is on my E3 wish list for sure. But what do you think? Do you see a possible future for new good Banjo games by current members of Rare? And tell me what's your favorite Banjo-Kazooie game in the comments. And if you thought today's video was interesting, make sure to drop a like and why not subscribe as well as it really helps the channel grow and ensures that I can continue making interesting content for you guys. I do got more videos on the way, so keep an eye out and I'll catch you there. Laters!